Hi, my name is Jason Kenty, and I'm with a group of Sasquatch investigators deep in the forests of Michigan. But I think there was two. Like two eyes. Two no, not, not one. What do you mean? Two sets? No. And it was there for a second, and then I went back and looked, and I was gone. What you're watching is raw footage. I had just seen large eye shine in the forest next to our camp. So everybody grabbed their infrared cameras and their lights, and we were looking into the forest to see what I had seen. I did it, all I saw was or how two, tall, how tall. It was it was it was the same level as the ATV. It was yeah. And it was for a second, and he he was talking to me, and I I saw it, and but I shifted my body and I looked back. And it, was, it, was kind of, it was right there. What right you're there. about to yeah. see is something tall move quickly behind a tree. And as if it knew it was caught, it yeah, stepped back out into the open. That good? The funny yeah. thing is, it was as if it knew how far it could stand from the beam of light no. from the infrared yeah. camera. I mean, it could have been a mouse. Like, I mean, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not jo I'm not joking. It could be a rodent, you yeah, know. smaller creature. Maybe. Okay. So I'm not saying this is a Sasquatch, be. but what Rodent. do you think it is? Yeah. No, maybe no. it's an owl, or it could maybe. be a bear standing up, or maybe it's just a light phenomenon. Now, I have to say there was a lot of strange experiences that I caught on camera while I was filming this documentary. So what do you think it is? Okay. It could be... A rodent, you yeah, know, smaller. maybe. Attention all viewers, the program you are about to watch, Searching for Sasquatch, is for entertainment purposes. Accounts described by guests are claimed to be true and accurate. Some names have been changed to protect individual privacy. Jason Kenzie is an expert animal adventurer with 25 years of field experience. Caution and companionship is advised for all who venture into the deep forest or backcountry. As I lay quietly in my hammock, unaware that 400 feet away, our infrared camera would pick up something unbelievable. The sounds of the whoops are very interesting, but it's the unexplained talking that is fascinating, a language that I do not recognize. What is it that's making those sounds in the forest? Suddenly, I was awakened by a loud crack, followed by something big walking towards me. And then the unimaginable happened. <laughs> From ostriches, wolves, bobcats, kangaroos, and everything in between, I'm no stranger to wildlife. As an animal photojournalist for over 25 years, I have traveled to some amazing locations. Now I'm on a mission to unlock the mystery of one of the world's most elusive creatures. My name is Jason Kenzie, and this is my documentary, Searching for Sasquatch. In part one, I flew to Michigan to take part in a Bigfoot expedition. Alongside of some experienced Bigfoot hunters, they took me deep into the Michigan wilderness. After we set up our camp, and once night fell, screams could be heard coming from out of the night. Wait a second. Who the hell is that? We found what could be Sasquatch footprints. 
and she squatches taught me about remote viewing. Well, we've been remote viewing this area with the we're looking at Google satellite imagery and we're using our psychic abilities asking to look for Bigfoot to be shown where Bigfoot is. And once the entire crew went to bed, strange whoops could be heard alongside of what sounded like talking. And after tying up a hammock tent underneath a large tree structure shaped as an X, I decided to spend the night. And after listening to many howls from far away in the darkness, suddenly I was awakened by a loud crack, followed by something big walking towards me. And then the unimaginable happened. As I laid frozen in fear, listening to the creature walk off, I wondered, what creature had just grunted at me? Maybe it was a bear, or a wild boar, or it could have been a wolf. They have been known to grow to 150 pounds. All I know is it is big, and I feel very vulnerable. I started to shake uncontrollably, thinking that it might come back and grab the tent and carry me off. So I decide to yell out to see if it was one of the researchers coming to check up on me. Dave? D Dave, is that you? I'm here. Whew, what a relief. It must have been David walking up on me. But when I got out of my hammock and saw David sitting on the floor of the forest, I had to ask, David, why are you on the ground? My hammock came, hung between these trees and tried to get into it and it split on me. Um, so I ended up laying on the ground right here by against this tree just like this. When I asked David if he was walking around, and his answer so shocked me. I was not walking around. I was here the entire night. Um, and just sat here basically the entire time. So if David was fast asleep, as he says he was, then what was it that grunted at me? We scouted the area for any signs of footprints. I can't believe you didn't hear any of the, the howls in the night. Okay, so I just put a recorder down and uh, we're gonna see if we can catch any um, vocals, noises, I'm gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it running all night long. This is gonna be amazing. Whatever it is, it's walking around back there, still doing its grunts. Probably a wild boar, maybe. It's so dark out here. I'm exhausted and finding nothing, I head back to my tent. The morning light will be upon me soon. I have to say, I was very excited to see the morning sun. If you think that I got any sleep, you would be wrong. Hey guys. Even in the morning, it can be a little freaky. I better get up and see how the other guys are doing. Need to get a good power up on it. It's in here. So. Out of the just look, you just flipped that. Okay, you flipped it up. Yeah. And then that button? Yeah. Turns on the thermal. Okay. Okay, it's on. Now to shut it off. Yeah. You see it, and here's your power bar. Yeah, I see it. Okay, when it goes to red, there's actually, if it does. When I got over to the rest of the group, I was excited to tell them what had happened in the night. Suddenly, Josh came over and said, hey, I found something interesting. So we jumped into the truck and headed over to the area of his discovery. Well, I came back this morning, uh, driving through here and I almost ran these two, uh, logs over and I backed up and I th honestly I had thought one of you guys had done it to see if it would be moved in the night but when I walked down there I couldn't find out nobody did this so 
something else did. Um, as you can see, there's drag marks from the left to right and to the right. Um, so these things must have been on the side of the road. Dragged right down to the middle. And it doesn't look like it's saying you can't get through here. It's saying, I almost feel like it's saying, uh, hi, we're here. Because <laughs> that's pretty obvious. It's in the shape of an X. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I'm taking it off the road and putting it back into its spot. Just as I placed the log down, something inside me was saying, this isn't a good idea. And I bet you it was like, looked like it was, it was like that. Oh yeah, probably. And uh, it's, uh, it's okay because if I pissed it off, <laughs> it's gonna come after you guys. When all of a sudden, a knock came from the forest behind me. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Come this way. As I approach the area where I believe the knocks came from, I'm concerned that maybe I pissed off whatever placed those logs on the ground. If something attacks us, I wasn't too concerned about Josh's safety. I'm you pretty sure thing, I mean, he can outrun me. You look in the direction and you just go behind the tree. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's so thick. Hopefully. I taste delicious. You watch when we come back, huh? and it's gonna move it. So I move it right back to. Went, that would be so trippy. Yeah, it would. Be. We didn't stick around. <laughs> Meanwhile, Blake and Robert were checking out tree structures, a phenomenon that seems to be everywhere in the forest around the world. It's okay, that's actually part of it. Huh, this would be your place where it fell, but it's woven in. Couldn't, I don't think, it couldn't fall between them trees and get in this one. This one's growing in. Yeah, like a little one. Yeah. That actually does look place. I think there, I think a lot of this, even probably this pushed over tree, is to block this gosh damn access. Because they've got them laying all across here. So we're now just kind of walking through this swampy area. I'm at a whole other location right now, and the other guys here, I'm with Chad, and uh, another group of Sasquatch hunters, and they have found a bear den. So, I'm heading over there right now to have a look at it. If it isn't too muddy, I might uh, try climbing into the bear den. See if there's any chickens in there. Because isn't that what's in bear dens? Let's have a look at this bear den. Well, how small? Right there. Like there. Winnie the Pooh? Take, go take a whip in. Put your nose up in there. Well, I mean, wow. Michigan must have the okay. smallest bears on the planet. Well, it's time to head back and get ready for our next nighttime investigation. As Robert and I were discussing the procedures of a nighttime exploration into the darkness of the forest, I keep wondering, maybe these creatures live in organized family or tribal groups. Where are we going in exactly? Like right here? Right over there. I can't help but think about an interview I had with a lady in Harrison Lake with what she believes are Sasquatches near my hometown in British Columbia. Here is what she had to say. Hi. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am so honored to meet you. Tell me your name and tell me uh, your experience that you had growing up here and Sasquatches. My name is Jill, Jill Hummerstone, but I used to be Jill Connor when I lived here. I spent 20 years here and it, we pioneered. It was pretty remote in those days. There was nobody around here. And we didn't have electricity, no telephone, none of that. But we were, we built a house and my ex-husband worked out of town a lot. And I spent a lot of time alone with three little children. For entertainment purposes, we used to go for walks and hikes around. And we had a diesel generator in those days. And I remember going out at night to, t to turn the generator off. It was um, usually about 11 o'clock at night. And I heard this sound this amazing sound, like a baby crying. And I heard it many, many times, and it kind of gave me the creeps a little bit in the beginning. 
And then um, I talked to the, um, some of the local native people and some of the other local people and they say, oh, that's the Sasquatch. That's the Sasquatch sound the Sasquatch makes. So then from that point on, I made a point of going and listening. And then I introduced my kids to the sound and we would, we would go out and listen. Oh, they're here, they're here. From that point on, um, I just became really interested in the Sasquatch. So is this the area? Well, this is what they call Morris Mountain. And the native lore is that Morris Mountain is where the Sasquatch lives. That's their home in the Pacific Northwest. Many of the rituals and the traditions of the Chehalis people um, are based on the traditions of the Sasquatch and the fact that the Sasquatch lives in this area. So then I became really interested in it and started you know, asking questions and that sort of thing. So how many times did you hear uh, a crying baby? Oh, lots. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Um, but always, I've never heard it in the daytime, always at night. It honestly, like a newborn baby, not not an older baby, but like a newborn baby. And it's, a, it's a, quite an eerie sound until you really learn what it's supposed to be or what it is. I would say at least regularly, weekly. And there was no one else around? No one else. No one lived. For miles? For miles, yeah. And so did anyone go up to see what it was that was making that sound? Well, where would you go? Like, you, the sound was, you couldn't determine where it was coming from. You know, it's like, I don't know if you've ever lived in the, in the, in the bush, but um, grouse make a sound where they flap their wings yep. and it, it, it tumbles. Those sounds are very difficult to trace. So, so how you tra trace a baby's crying? No. And uh, it was dark, so I wasn't really interested in going to find the sound. And did you ever find footprints or anything that's unusual? The only thing unusual I ever found was um, an eagle that had um, had died, and um, it was almost it was almost like it had a special spirit, and I felt that that. I just got the impression that that eagle had seen something that that I needed to see, yeah. and I don't know what it was, but yeah. it was just it was just strange. So, have you seen a Sasquatch? I have. I have seen one physically um, one night again at night, and um, I was driving home from. Um, from the Sasquatch in, in to coming home just before the turn off to um, Hemlock Valley in those days it was called that now it's called Sasquatch and um, well that's because Sasquatch has taken up skiing yeah and snowboarding <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well it's because it's supposed to be the home of the Sasquatch right so anyway um, I came home and and um, I had my kids with me the two little ones were asleep my son was in the front seat and we both saw um, this flash and as it went by he, he kind of gasped and then I looked again and it looked right at me and then dashed off into the bush. How far away were you? Oh maybe 30 feet. 30 feet? Yeah not that far and of course I slammed on the brakes right away on my car. And how big was it do you think? It was probably about twice as tall as I was and I'm 5'6 so there you go you know it was probably around seven feet or close to it anyway. Piercing eyes, I saw the eyes and... Um, what color were the eyes? Dark, very very dark. So you were that close to it? That oh that I could see the eye, oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, but it, it was a flash. Like yeah. it wasn't very long, and it was gone. And then I stopped the car to to look to see if I could see it, and I heard it rustling in the bush, but it was gone. Wow. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of teaming up with a friend of mine and coming back into this area, spend the night, and see if we can find any evidence of Sasquatch that is out here. What do you think? Do you think why not? They might be still around. They, oh, oh, I know they are. I know they're still around. I mean, where are they going to go? 
you know. Skiing, and, <laughs> snowboarding. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, Jill, I want to say thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. The story is pretty amazing. Yeah. It happened a long time ago. It. Um, well, how old are you now? Oh, I'm 73. 73? <laughs> you don't look a day past 60. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you'll take that out. <laughs> well, do you want to take me to the area where you actually saw the Sure, Sasquatch? I sure do. Okay, well, let's get out of here. Okay. Tell me exactly, where did you see this creature run? Okay, so I was driving in to, that way, and um, it literally walked across the road. And when I first spotted it, it was right in the center. Now, you have to remember, in those days, this was all gravel road. So it stood almost in the center, looked at me, turned around. So right about here. Yep. Right? And literally with giant footsteps, didn't run, just giant footsteps, went in that way, turned one more time to look at me, and went down. And what time of night was this again? Oh, it was about 10 o'clock at night. Well, that would be pretty freaky. So then, I, of course, I heard it, because um, it was about this time of the year. So the leaves would have been on the ground and, and I heard it go further. And then it was gone. No. But I even pulled up here and stopped and looked and I couldn't see anything. Hemlock Mountain is right there. There's a road That's right. that yeah. goes right up there. Well, in those days it was called, the ski resort was Hemlock yeah. Valley, yeah. but now it's called Sasquatch Mountain. <laughs> yeah, ironically. Yeah. Sasquatch Mountain. <laughs> Okay, well, this is great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. It astounds me to hear these stories like the one Jill has just told me. Imagine families of these creatures possibly raising their young only meters from where you live. So I'm going to meet up with a buddy of mine, and together we are going to investigate this area and see if we can find any evidence. Tonight, we could possibly have a break in the case and prove to the world that Sasquatches are real. Or end up creating the biggest blisters on the bottom of my feet that has ever been seen. Oh. You know what's interesting is I have seen lots of photos of alleged Sasquatch and they all seem to be like out of focus, very blurry. And I'm not sure maybe if, you know, Sasquatches are real. Maybe they have some kind of a cloaking device that causes the cameras to, you know, get out of focus. Or maybe uh, the person that's taking uh, the photo uh, has a cold and is sneezing all the time and just jerks the, the camera. I don't know, but I have to keep my wits about myself here because I'm in cougar territory. Okay. Hey. Hey, there oh, you are. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So I interview uh, Jill. She has said that she heard crying babies late at night. This is many, many years ago. And uh, I'm excited to get back here and see what we can find. Well, I'm hoping we find something today. I can't wait. Let's go. It didn't take long for that ball of fire in the sky to go down behind those mountains. Now the fun will begin. Oh, it's getting cold. I put my coat on. Hey, Paul, I think this is where we're going to... We're going to put the speaker. All right, this is going to be great. Okay. Oh, okay. This is gonna be amazing. I'll just put my coat so I have something to sit down on. You go, it's good that my coat is leather. You know what, maybe let's uh, just look around for a little bit first. Wow. Paul, this is, this is great right here. So Jill says, that she heard what sounded like a baby crying. So I have a speaker and I've downloaded uh, some audio of a crying baby. And we're gonna play that tonight and see if anything comes walking up. 
I hope something comes along. You know, Jill was such a nice lady. Now, I don't want to say that what happened to her didn't happen. Uh, I believe that she heard something and that she saw something. Was it Sasquatches that made the crying babies? Or was it maybe a bear that ran across the road in front of her? You know what? I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you. But I believe that she believes that she heard something and she saw something. Okay, you know what? I think we should stay around here and just listen. Yeah, I think I just saw a bat. Yeah. Yeah, right over there. I see. Yeah, I see. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, they better not get any funny business. Oh, I know. I heard they like the nice taste oh. of bulls. Oh my I gosh, know. I can't I believe how it flies so through the trees like that. Yeah, there's bats all over the place. This is really oh. cool. Oh, you see oh. that? Oh. oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh. That's too close. It's like, whoa. Lucky I don't have long hair. That's you know, pretty much the only time that you might get bit Ooh. by a bat. You just went, Whoa. <laughs> Is if you have long hair and if you're in like a cave where there's lots of bats flying around, if you have long hair, the bats could actually hit your hair and just get tangled and then they start biting and scratching and then you're pretty much screwed. And uh, you turn to a vampire and Ooh. you eat the rest of your crew. That's what happens. Well, they're just flying everywhere. Crazy. Yeah, there is. And you can hear him. Oh, you see that? Yeah, I did. Oh, I did it. Just, whoa, whoosh, straight around. Big circle. Ooh, oh, yeah. Again. Yeah, right oh. there. Oh. <laughs> I have no doubt in my mind that this area could support a family of 900 pound creatures. This is so cool. This place is teeming with life that could easily be used as food. Let's go over there. That looks like an interesting area to check out. It didn't take me long to spot something very interesting. Wow, this is cool. Check this out. Oh. So this could be a sign that, that, that there is termites around. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in the Sasquatch community, uh, they believe that uh, Sasquatch pushes down trees. Now, in the last uh, documentary that I did, uh, we did have a tree that fell. I do know one thing is... Wait, what the f***? No. Wait, stop. Don't move. Don't move. Stop. 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 Look, I know you're scared. Not what you think it is. Is that a Sasquatch? No. No. If anything, it could be a bear. What? Okay. You know what? Bears are actually hibernating right now, so um, it, maybe it's a cougar. <laughs> okay, I suck at this. Um, I'm pretty sure it was still rotted wood and that's why it fell. This, probably the same thing, but it's, it's quite interesting to find. Oh, and spider webs. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a spider web right there. Look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, we got the owls going. Behind me, it's hard to see that there's a light, but I have brought a speaker into the forest and I'm going to play a crying baby. And then we're gonna sit and we're gonna wait and see if anything comes around. I'll just sit here and play the crying baby. Yeah. Oh, 
Thank God. It's almost getting a headache there. And we'll turn off the light here. So it may not look like it, but it is pretty dark out here. It's very dark. Very dark. Very, very dark. Paul, did you hear that? There's something over there. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard something. As Paul and I sit here quietly in the darkness, listening to small animals scamper throughout the underbrush. To be honest, I wasn't expecting the crying baby to give us any results, until suddenly, from out of the darkness came a god-awful scream. Although, you know, you, you could get the, you hear that? <laughs> Oh, Whoa. it's a coyote. Maybe it's a coyote. Could be maybe a stray dog. I'm wondering if the microphones will pick this up. Did you hear that? Yeah. We should go out that way. What is this? Maybe go towards it. Whatever it is, it gave me goosebumps. It almost sounded like it was imitating the babies crying. Like what was that? I don't know. I've never heard that sound before. That was cool. Yeah, it sounded like it was trying to imitate the crying baby. Yeah, I wonder, whoa, could it be a Sasquatch, you think? No, I doubt it, but I've never heard that sound before. That was really cool. I'm gonna turn it back on. It's so trippy. I know that other Sasquatch hunters have used the crying baby uh, on their expeditions. And it's interesting, but what makes my crying baby way different than theirs? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know what? I'll go for a little walk and you stay here use you as bait. That sounds so safe. <laughs> they can be so scary out here. It's like my own shadows because ah! as I walked over broken branches trying not to break a leg I'm trying to adjust my eyes and my ears to the darkness. I'm wondering if Paul is having more luck than I am. Nope, doesn't look like it. The sun's going to be coming up soon. Yeah, we've been looking hard enough. Let's get out of here. Okay, guys, well, the only thing we found was some strange sounds. I haven't seen any tracks anywhere, but... Whatever it is, it won't let us get near it. No, because every time we get close to it, it seems to be walking away from us. Yeah, it gets farther away. The screams in the night, they were freaky. Really difficult to track. I wish I could have had more time to search the area to see what had made those sounds. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay. Now back to Michigan, where Robert was explaining our plan for the night. So we want them to divide and then parallel us in. And then that way they don't have to try to concentrate on more than one group and try to work all these people. They can stay together and just parallel us. So they stay in a group, we stay in a group. Something's walking out there. In, out there, out there. Okay guys, well let's get going. Let's catch a big foot. To catch a big foot. Yeah. We all follow Robert into the forest. So. Robert demonstrated a unique tracking method which utilizes following tree breaks thought to be made by these creatures. As we followed Robert into the dark forest, we came upon a tree structure. Is there any breaks on that tree? And look beyond that, look at that structure. Yeah, there's a structure over there. That is amazing. Finally, we found a piece of evidence that there might be powerful creatures capable of manipulating heavy trees and branches. In infrared, you can't really make it. Yeah, there you go. See the broken rub? Okay, so this is awesome. 
Let's let our party catch up. Come here, come here, come here. You should approach where you should see this. This is a wall, right? And you know why? Look right there. See the structure? So check this out. This is a block that they're blocking our path because this is the path in right here. And this is a rub where they're going over. So we want to check this for hair. This whole thing. Look how mad it is. Look at this. Well, they just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. And it's like you want, that's a, probably a plant fiber. Yeah. But this shows fiber by fiber. Now oh, that, there, yeah. that does not look like a plant fiber. Anybody got a sample kit? So right now, uh, we're getting out a test kit uh, just to collect some samples of hair. Here's, a, here's for your infrared, you can see. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, back at the camp, James is listening to the crew's discussion. I suspect he was amused by our ongoing trips and falls as we traversed the logs and fallen trees that littered the forest floor. Suddenly, Robert spotted what he believes could be footprints and possibly a knuckle print. There's two things, there's, two, there's it's several. For one, this is a footprint. I wondered why it looked this way. So for one, it's a footprint, this right here. And then mm -hmm. over that deep, a lot of pressure, is two fingers and the palm and probably curved thumb. And then that one is coming this way yeah. with, with three fingers down and the cup from the, the cup from the, palm, from the palm. But so they're going back and forth here. This yeah. is a back and forth deal right here. I can just imagine Sasquatches over there in the forest, watching us and wondering, what the heck is all this excitement over our footprints? Yeah, that's why it's the same. Look, there's another one right here. There's more. They're all bent down. There's a lot of looks to be manipulation here. Oh, yeah. The big, big, old break, big old break right there. Here you go. Look, guys. Oh, look at that. Right here? Yeah, it's a big break. And it is not crumbling, so it's newer. New gray. Double snap. Seven, eight, and foot. a shatter. That's eight foot. And then check it. To make it, something touch this, to make this bend, since this is brand new, watch this. They, they took it here and down, something from up here down. Now what passage of ammo doesn't break the branches up here? So that's been pushed down manually. Now we gotta find them. This break is from today. Look at it. If you can get a view of it, I'll pull this out of the way. Nothing, and this whole top has been busted over and down. Today, look at the leaves. There is zero wilting on the leaves, and that wilt is an hour. Hour. But there's a spider web on it. So. You got any hair in the spider web? Uh, I don't know. No, but there's a big ass spider there. <laughs> Robert found something. You wow, see that? look at that. Okay, now wait. See the, the other broken branches in a row, but nothing above it's broken. It can't get in slow snow load. See the bark all rubbed off of that fucker? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Come here. This is oh, this is exciting. Here. Instead of this way. And that's probably near where we found the tracks because something inspired the grunt. And we didn't tend, if he was off to our left, we didn't tend toward that then. So that would have been driving us back out to the right even though we didn't do it on purpose or didn't do it because of the grunt. Because if the grunt's to our left, he's trying to drive us to the right. So yeah, we can go over here and do that and then take a moment and spear head back in. We bushwhacked around the forest area, seeking more signs, but after a number of hours and no additional discovery, we decided to head back to camp. I was just taking a relaxed sit down when Blake walked into camp asking, who wants to join him on a walk into the far forest to retrieve his voice recorder? Suddenly, I felt very rested and ready for another adventure. Little did I know I would step into an immersive experience that would forever change my life and challenge my skepticism. My name is Jason Kenzie. I've gone deep into the Michigan forest 
with a group of Bigfoot researchers to film a documentary. After waking up to a sound of a grunt from an unknown animal, I quickly found out that something in the forest has been watching us. I talked to a lady who heard strange noises in the forest that sounded like a crying baby. Locals claim that Sasquatches raise their babies in that area. And after meeting up with Paul and blasting a baby crying sound into the forest, we got back a blood curling scream. Wow. Jars Parsons came across logs that looked like they were placed there as a warning. Robert Kreider led a group of us into the forest to see if we could find any evidence of these creatures. Finding what Kreider believes is a footprint and a knuckle track. It was impressive how many unexplained tree breaks that we came across. Now I'm about to go with Blake deeper into the forest to retrieve a voice recorder. We're gonna go out and change the recorder. It's about a mile back in the woods. And uh, we'll see what happens and hopefully get some activity. It was great to be asked to join Blake to go on a quest to replace a voice recorder deep in the forest. This will be the longest time I've spent hanging out with this guy. A man of mystery. I just wanted to know how long it took him to grow his beard. Recording going all night. And especially in this area, pick up stuff that we're not going to be able to hear at camp. And it still has battery left, but uh, not that much. We're going to set it up. As we journeyed along this decommissioned service road, it seemed like the forest was closing in on us. That's super bendy still. I mean, not really breaking the very tip of it, so bendy. Blake's red headlamp lit up the forest all around us. I could tell this road hadn't been traveled on for months. So that's very fresh. Look at the next one. Look at the one over. Same thing, that's real fresh. I, I, I can't remember if this was like this when I came through earlier so that or not. They must have seen you. They, oh, look. If only I had psychic abilities, only then I would have seen what was coming. This one here, it, it tried to twist it. It was crazy how many broken and twisted tree breaks there are along this trail. Okay, Blake and I just came across these tree breaks and Blake thinks that these were not here earlier when he came through. But if you look at, and look how high that is, you know, that's like, that's seven feet. Yeah, it's so fresh, I mean, these aren't dry, they're not breaking, they're bending. See if there's another one over here. Every other one is yeah. straight. Except straight, 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 except for this one. That means they have to bend it and then come back and bend it. And come back and bend it. Yeah. Out of all the pine trees that are standing straight, these ones are all congested and bent together. Yeah. In the same spot. All of a sudden, Blake's headlamp went out. I guess the batteries must have died. An omen to come. Bo Suddenly, show. there was a crack Hello. in the dark forest behind us. We jump and we turn around. As I shine my headlamp down the far end of the road, all of a sudden, I saw eye shine. Holy fuck. Dude, I think I see eye shine. Uh, correction, I think I saw eye shine. Right there where my light is. The eye shine I am seeing is very similar to the eye shine that Wade Hollenbach showed me that he caught on his hunting camera. But when I opened up the video on my computer about it was a month later, I, I couldn't believe the eye shine. I could clearly see this thing was walking through the woods left to right. The eyes were staying level through the trees and um, I knew it couldn't be a bird or anything else, that it had to be a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot walking through the woods. I was nervous. Nish not bad. But I wasn't about to run and leave Blake to have all the fun. Whoop. 
I'm in Michigan with a team of Sasquatch researchers searching for any evidence of these creatures. I slept under a large tree structure that was shaped as an X. Something walked up on me and grunted. While Josh was driving his truck, he almost hit a couple logs that were laid out on the only road leading in and out. When I moved the logs back to their position from off the road, a knock pierced the air. Now I'm with Blake deep in the forests on a mission to replace a voice recorder when I spotted something that could be eye shine. I saw that. My light shined on him and he closed his eyes. Nice. Hello, my friend. Holy fuck. He closed his eyes. Is he on the ground? No, he's, he's standing. I can't see him. I don't know. I, I can't tell from here. I mean, it's high up though. It's. I shined my, uh, my thing on him, my light, and he. Oh, there it is. Oh, he's looking. Do you see him there? He's like right there. I can, I, my camera cannot see it, but I can see it. See? Look at his little eyes right there. It's ironic that as soon as the light went out. Right there. And he's just hovering. He's What's crazy is the fact that as we are focused on this one area where I believe I'm seeing something with eye shine, we can hear something walking, breaking sticks, moving on either side of us, as if they are circling us. Hello. We just want to be your friends. Um, we're nice. Whoa, show. Yeah, he's looking right at us. I see him. Like, I see his eyes. I wish my camera would see this. Whoa, show. Sabe. See, right there. Right there, right where my... You could see just the tint of his eyes right there. Oh, and now he just... I know the camera cannot see this, but there is something over there and it has eye shine and it's, I can't, I don't want to say how tall it is because I'm not over there. I don't have a ruler, but, oh, and he, there's another one and it's walking right there. See, I see, I see him blink over there. That's the thing. Yeah. So why would they just stand there with their eyes looking at me? Sorry about Just relax. Okay. It's all good. Just that, that noise yeah. made it sound like something was coming out of the forest. I won't run, just to let you know. I just will not run. I will, you know, jump right. and maybe fall down, but I'm not going to sprint away. That's pretty good. Right? Okay. Just to let you know, I'm not going to run and leave you. Or if you missed that, it's okay. We did too. As Blake turned around, just inside the forest beside us, what seemed to be eye shine, as if something large was watching us. Then all of a sudden... Yeah. Oh my gosh, there is two of them. Yeah? Yes, there is two. There's one even further, like, to, to the, the, the left. Sabe? Well, let's just get walk. Okay. Yeah. We're going to walk towards him. Hello? You hear that? Bow show, Jenna. Minister Sabe. We just come in peace. We don't want to cause you any harm, so please don't cause us harm. 
We want to see you step out. We know you're there. We would like to see you. But peacefully though. We will try we will not be scared. We don't mean you no harm. Um earlier when I jumped, um I saw my own shadow. So has nothing to do with you. Babe. La 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 la. As we moved closer to the area of the eye shine, I had no idea what to expect. La 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 Well, this explains why they're right here. Because look at the, the big space they have to get away. We're more Nishinaabe are. How do you know um, how to talk? Like that. I'm trying to study Native American. Uh, a lot of Native tribes are putting their languages online to save them from being extinct. Oh. I couldn't believe it, but the same eye shine that was beside us earlier was directly in front of us, only a meter away. How we didn't see the creature that the eyes belonged to what? is a mystery. Checking this out. We were checking this out, looking at this. Yeah. And it was right there watching us. They might have just done it. No, I'm surprised. I wish I had a more powerful light. Maybe it's an owl looking for its next meal. As I turned around, there, 25 yeah. feet oh. away from me, a shadow figure dropped to the ground and scampered across the ground like a spider. Its whites of its eyes mm -hmm. stared at me the entire time. It made its way into the forest. I almost fell over. Oh, he, oh, he was on the ground. He's on the ground. Yeah. I saw him crawling. He was crawling right there. Have you seen him crawling? I saw him crawling right there. Okay. Right there across the ground. Which way? Which right side? there. Left side, right side. Going this way. I saw him crawl because I saw his eyes on the, on the ground. Oh, it was like, I just saw the shadow of him. And he just went right across, crawling on the ground. Huge? Yeah, it was huge. Like, I could just see, it, the, the eyes were like, like that. Like. Well, if it was a bear or anything else, we'd hear. Just to let you know, I, I don't taste good. Trust me, if they wanted us. Yeah, I know. If they wanted us, we'd be dead by now. As Blake and I moved closer to the spot where I saw the creature scamper into the forest, something with eye shine stalked us from within the darkness. Was this the creature that I just saw moving along the ground? I don't know if you can see that, but it was right there. Oh, okay. It's probably a bird, obviously. But it was right there. As Blake and I made our way back to camp, I couldn't comprehend what just happened. Did I really see the creatures refer to us as Sasquatches? Or were we caught up in the moment and fear led the way for our imagination to take over? The morning glow couldn't come fast enough. I was a little under the weather because today was my last day here and I knew I had to say goodbye to my friends. Good morning. It's about uh, 9.30 in the morning and I slept in the truck. Um, I was going to sleep in the forest, but I thought I would just get too cold. And after last night and what I saw, um, as confusing as it was, um, I didn't feel as if, you know, I wanted to be sleeping in the forest. Well, I better get up and get going. I'm very tired. Hey guys. Hey man. Hey. This is the end of my adventure this time. 
I had so much fun with you guys. The experience I will never forget. And you know, I have another eyewitness to go and interview right now. Thank you so much. It's nice a pleasure. Hey, to see you go, man. It's yeah. been wonderful, bro. Awesome. Hey, a lot of fun. Thanks. You guys rock. We're doing real good. Soon. I'll see you guys later. See ya. Bye. The last few days have been a roller coaster of excitement. These creatures that seem to fascinate so many minds may not just be in our imaginations. Could there be truly nine foot hominoids roaming the North American forests? Well, I can't wait till the day I come face to face with one of these intelligent beings. Until then, I will leave here with the greatest thing out of searching for Sasquatch. And that is knowing I have made some incredible friendships. My name is Jason Kenzie, and until my next expedition, always remember, never let the adventures die. But if you are chased out of the forest by a Sasquatch, it will be okay for you to cry.